Good evening. It's, uh, it's my pleasure today to kick off the presentations and to demonstrate uh, a couple of aspects of um, PC Crash, which is a, a software a package that uh, we use for uh, image rectification. Within the software suite, there is uh, a, an image rectification tool uh, which allows us to extract information from uh, photographs or images uh, that can be extracted from video uh, or images um, from static sources such as CCTV footage, um, mobile sources such as dash cam and helmet cam footage. The software allows us to, uh, if necessary, we can survey uh, busy roads by uh, rectifying photographs. Uh, I shall go into that uh, presently. And reconstructing the incidents, uh, uh, the incident events from CCTV footage. The software allows us to um, position a camera, a virtual camera, to be automatically adjusted uh, to give the same view as uh, in a 3D model of the scene. And areas of interest uh, within the image can then be rectified and positioned on a ground plan uh, within the 3D model. The image um, can be a photograph uh, supplied by a witness, for example, from a mobile phone, uh, from your client or a police photograph, uh, an image extracted from CCTV footage or uh, one that you might have taken yourself. And the photograph and uh, video images can be, uh, which are visually unhelpful, uh, then can be rectified uh, to give an overhead view and extract uh, information uh, which is of some use. The ground plan, um, which forms the basis of the 3D model, it uh, can be uh, from a number of sources, uh, for example, uh, Google Earth or a scale plan, uh, such as those produced by the police or other agencies, or, or ordnance survey data. Here is uh, just a, an example of, I'm sure you're familiar with, of, of a Google Earth overhead image. And this is an extract uh, from uh, an ordnance survey map that we, that we might use. Uh, these have to be um, scaled so that they provide uh, uh, the basis for uh, the ground plan. And in this example, uh, we had a scale plan which was supplied by the police. And this leads on to uh, where this uh, software uh, uh, was of some assistance to us. You can see here that the, um, the police reconstruction expert determined an area uh, of the point of impact. Um, and we were instructed um, in this case to uh, assess the uh, validity of that. You'll note uh, on this um, uh, police scale plan that there is a, a long scuff mark leading away from the impact area. Just remind the impact, oops. The impact area being here and this being the long scuff mark leading away from it. In this particular incident, the, uh, uh, not shown on the plan, but the vehicle came to rest uh, some distance uh, in this direction. This is uh, the police photograph showing uh, the, the uh, scuff mark. <coughs> and you'll note that there is um, a short angled uh, commencement of the scuff mark. And just here, where I'm indicating now. And if I go back to the uh, plan, you'll notice that that mark was unsurveyed. and it was inadequately photographed. But nonetheless, there was a tire scuff mark that 
didn't appear in the um, evidence from the police. The angle and length of the uh, short scuff mark in this instance was of importance because it could potentially identify the correct collision point rather than the collision point that was assumed by the police uh, collision investigator. And I'll just now briefly go through um, uh, the mechanism for uh, rectifying uh, the images and uh, placing the information on the ground plan. Uh, first of all, a virtual camera is, is placed within the uh, software to give um, a view similar to what the photograph showed. And here you can see um, a photograph positioned approximately to give the same view as the um, plan. If I go back to the, so there's the plan and there's the photograph aligned uh, with the plan, it, uh, approximately. It's um, by um, identifying common points within the photograph and the plan, uh, such as these uh, points here, where I bring common points here and here, that being the uh, start of the scuff mark and that being the scuff mark on the plan and others up here. It's then, the software then combines the two such that the uh, photograph overlays the plan. And it's now possible to rectify this image so that the, uh, the missing scuff mark on the plan can then be added um, to the information that the plan represents. Uh, this is achieved by overlaying um, a grid of uh, uh, pixels, for want of a better word. It's actually a series of uh, many thousands of points which are overlaid over the plan within the software and the software will colorize uh, the points so that it replicates the image, uh, the photographic image. And uh, the advantage with this is that the points are physically located in the plan and they represent the uh, orientation and position uh, without the perspective of the photograph. Uh, this process can be repeated, uh, in effect, uh, in this instance, zoomed in. And this area here is the uh, information that we're after. And that shows where this tire scuff mark started. And because this is rectified onto the plan, uh, these are... Um, the start of that scuff mark can then be measured. And in this instance, the scuff mark, the angled scuff mark, uh, was just over half a metre from the commencement of the scuff mark uh, surveyed by the police. That might uh, not seem much, but in this particular case, um, since the collision would have occurred prior to any tyre scuff mark becoming visible, this led to the conclusion that the collision occurred either on the double white line system or on the correct side of the road for the client's driver, which is substantially different from the view taken by the police. So that's just a, a, a demonstration of how um, rectifying a, a photograph can uh, uh, replicate um, physical marks, uh, which can then be measured directly off the plan. Uh, this next um, example uh, shows how we can perform the same sort of rectification only using CCTV imagery. And this relates to an incident that occurred uh, in South London. And here you can see the uh, CCTV. And you'll note uh, this lady with a shopping trolley uh, about to cross the road.
This was a, a criminal case. And the driver of the Renault, the turning Renault, was charged uh, with an offence of causing serious injury by dangerous driving, uh, to which she pleaded not guilty. Uh, it was her case that uh, the pedestrian was in a blind spot and that she mistakenly accelerated uh, instead of braking. And it was the view of the police um, that there was no evidence to indicate that the Renault had accelerated and that the pedestrian was always within the driver's field of view whilst uh, she appreciated the, uh, approached the junction and turned right. And it was uh, our instruction to consider the papers and um, view the CCTV and uh, uh, verify or otherwise uh, the, the, uh, as the driver's account of the incident. Included in the uh, papers uh, was the scale, police scale plan of the incident. And the, uh, the Renault in question, uh, as you saw, drove along here and out and then down this road here. And the pedestrian crossed approximately in this area. Uh, using the rectification tool within the PC crash, uh, a virtual camera was positioned within the 3D model of the collision scene at the approximate uh, position of the CCTV camera. And this was the uh, uh, simulated view from the CCTV camera, which is effectively looking down and along um, uh, the road, which uh, was St. James's Crescent. And using the same, uh, this, um, uh, this is uh, a, a still image taken from the CCTV. And using the same method as before, um, the, this, uh, the background image, which is the uh, CCTV image, is positioned such that uh, it, the, the virtual camera view and the uh, CCTV camera view gives approximately the same view. Common points uh, between the two uh, are then selected to enable the uh, software to position the virtual camera in the same position as the CCTV camera. And for example, a point here, the center of the junction uh, on the plan and here the center of the junction in the photograph. Uh, there are a number of other um, points uh, within the plan and the photograph. And when sufficient points are selected, the software optimizes the camera position such that the, um, the virtual camera position and the CCTV camera position show the same view uh, relative to the ground plan. Further images from the CCTV footage uh, can then be uh, introduced as background images um, over the virtual camera view. Uh, this enables um, the position of the parties at various points in time to be placed within the 3D model. Uh, for example, in this uh, particular image, the, uh, the Renault and the pedestrian are at uh, 1453 and 21, and this happens to be frame 10, and this is now loaded as the background image. This is uh, within the 3D model of the scene, and because it's within the 3D model of the scene, it's now possible to place 3D models of uh, the vehicle in question and uh, the pedestrian and a shopping trolley so that it replicates uh, their position at that particular point in time um, within the 3D model. This is a view uh, showing the overhead view 
of this instance. So that's the view from the CCTV camera and the virtual camera. And this is an overhead view showing the position of the Renault and the pedestrian at that moment in time. Now, uh, by repeating this uh, process with different background images from the CCTV footage, the motion of the parties uh, can be established uh, with respect to time and distance. And that enables an animation or a simulation of the motion of the parties um, uh, to be produced. And in this case, uh, this shows uh, the result of that analysis. So this uh, um, uh, reconstruction is made up from uh, studying the um, positions of the, uh, the two parties at uh, various points um, provided by the background images from the CCTV. So it's, it's, it's quite labour intensive, but it, uh, frame by frame it's possible to show the motion of the, of the parties in this case uh, within the 3D model. And by using additional software, it's possible to um, show that the uh, uh, simulation is synchronous with the CCTV footage. So if I run through that again and pause it, you'll see here the Renault starting to approach the junction line. And at that point, I've um, demonstrated uh, the, the virtual reconstruction, so that the, uh, which is the red car, which is superimposed on the position of the Renault. And the, uh, the Renault the, is uh, positioned as shown from the CCTV footage and the, um, the reconstruction are synchronised. And this allows us to be confident that the uh, reconstruction um, is is um, is correct with uh, what is shown on the CCTV footage. Once the motion of the, um, the various parties have been established, then uh, the software produces uh, various information, and in this case, um, a graph showing the um, respective speeds uh, with regard to time of the Renault. And in this particular instance, just after the Renault moves away from the junction, there's a rapid increase in speed uh, shortly after, which is uh, this increase here. And which is consistent uh, with a high acceleration and which could be consistent with a misapplication of the throttle pedal. With regard to the blind spot, uh, the shaded area, uh, which shows the extent of the uh, blind spot caused by the offside A-pillar, uh, which was established by uh, direct measurement from uh, an exemplar vehicle. And this indicates that there was potential for the pedestrian to, be in a, to have been obscured uh, from the driver's view by the A-pillar. 
And to demonstrate this, uh, so just uh, I'll play that again. And you can see here that as the uh, Renault approaches the junction, uh, the blind spot or potential blind spot uh, moves with the vehicle and approaches the uh, pedestrian as she's crossing the road. Which demonstrates that there um, in this particular instance, that there was a, a potential for the A pillar to have um, obscured the pedestrian's motion in the road, which um, was uh, the driver's case um, in this instance. Because the model exists uh, within three dimensions, it's uh, possible to place a, a virtual camera within the vehicle showing the uh, driver's uh, potential viewpoint. And this is a simulation of uh, what her view might have been as she approached the junction. And you can see here that uh, from this virtual position, the uh, pedestrian and her trolley uh, could have been completely hidden by the offside A-pillar. During the course of the trial, um, there were particular questions raised as to whether uh, the pedestrians on the footway, were, who were both witnesses, had a particular view of the driver or not. And it was possible to resolve this by, again, placing a virtual camera at the respective viewpoints of the pedestrians. And this is a simulation of the view um, afforded to the pedestrian that was closest to the uh, incident. The the particular question was how much of uh, the street furniture might have obscured her view, and it's possible to tell uh, the um, the the upright uh, pillar uh, is is to scale and. This shows that uh, there was some potential for the street furniture to obscure the view, uh, but not uh, particularly significantly. The issue was in connection with uh, the use of a mobile phone in this instance. And similarly, this is a reconstruction of the view from the pedestrian that's furthest away. This is the pedestrian that was nearest. You can see here, this is a reconstruction of the building line and the particular query in this instance was whether the, this pedestrian would have had a view through the front window. And it's possible to see uh, from this location that there would have been uh, a, a view, but 
the offside A pillar would also have uh, caused some obstruction to the interior of the vehicle. Um, as is normal in these cases, uh, uh, there were joint discussions with the uh, police expert and um, after this uh, he reconsidered his view and uh, adopted the motion of the parties as shown by this uh, reconstruction. And that's uh, the end of uh, my presentation and uh, I'll happily take questions I think after the next one. <laughs>